Hello, I am Flash Isaac, and today I shall be taking you through alkanoic acids. Better still, carboxylic acids. What is an acid? According to Arrhenius, acid or an acid is any substance which, when dissolved or dissociates in water, produces hydrogen ion. Why, according to Arrhenius, bases are substance which, when dissolved or dissociated in water, produces hydrogen ion. The hydrogen ion is a positive ion, while the hydrogen ion is a negative ion. According to Brunsted and Lowry, acids are proton donor, while bases are proton acceptor. Now, hydrogen ion can be referred to as proton because hydrogen has one proton and one electron. That is hydrogen atom. So when a hydrogen atom loses one electron or loses the only electron it has, it becomes hydrogen ion or a proton. So Brunsted and Lowry describes acids as proton donor and bases as proton acceptor. And according to Jean Lewis, Acids are electron pair acceptor, while bases are electron pair donor. That is acids and bases definitions. Now, acid or an acid can be organic or inorganic. In my video on non metals and their compounds, I was able to explain some compounds of non metals from there. I listed out some acids which I analyzed and gave their properties and uses. Feel free to check out that video, the Flash Nana's YouTube channel. An example of inorganic acid is H2SO4. Inorganic acids are not from natural source. Most of them are prepared from non metal. Meanwhile, organic acids are from natural source or from organic source and organic acids are studied in organic chemistry what is organic chemistry organic chemistry is the study of the compound of carbon except the carbide of carbon the oxide of carbon the sulfide of carbon and the carbonates of carbon alkanoic acids are simply organic acids with the general formula CnH2n plus 1 COOH, that is the general formula for alkanoic acids or carboxylic acids. The CnH2n plus 1 is simply the alkyl group. The alkyl groups are formed when an alkane loses one hydrogen. For example, C2H6. This is an alkane, ethane precisely. Alkanes, they contain single carbon to hydrogen bonds throughout. And this is a hydrocarbon. Remember, Organic chemistry is divided into hydrocarbon and non-hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons are compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen only. When you look at this arcane or ethane, it contains just carbon and hydrogen, no other element. It is referred to as hydrocarbon. And hydrocarbons can be divided into aliphatic and aromatic hydrocarbon. Aliphatic hydrocarbons, they have straight chain or branch chain. They can be cyclic or acyclic. Meanwhile, aromatic hydrocarbons, they contain the benzene ring. Compounds with single carbon to carbon bond or single bond throughout are referred to as saturated compounds. So they cannot undergo addition reaction. They simply undergo substitution reaction. Now what happens? For substitution to take place, one has to go which means one hydrogen atom will be substituted. Instead of C, 
H2H6. This compound becomes 2 carbon C2, 5 hydrogen H5, C2, H5. So, this is an 18, this is an ethyl. So, YL is an alkyl, and alkane has lost, has lost one hydrogen. Then, this COOH comes here to stay. We form what? An acid. Now, what is the name of this acid? To name an acid, we simply count the number of carbon. How many carbons we have? One, two, three. So, this is simply propanoic acid. When it comes to naming of acid, this is something that should come to your mind. Without the COOH, we call this ethane, right? Now, adding this COOH does not make it ethanoic acid. Why? The C in the acid counts or adds to the other carbons. And when you have three carbons, it is propane. Two carbons, ethane. One, methane. Four carbons, butane. Five, pentane. Six, hexane. Seven, heptane. Eight, octane. Nine, nonane. And ten, decane. So, this is simply an, a propanoic acid. If you, if you uh, intend to reduce here to H, this simply becomes CH3COOH. This is an alkyl group. This is the carboxylic group. So, this is ethanoic acid. Now, I said an alkanoic acid or carboxylic acid are organic acids with the general formula CNH2N plus 1 COOH. Where this is an alkyl group, it can be short, long, or very, very long. Anywhere you see, and if you have three carbons, then here, 3 times 2, 6 plus 1, 7. That will be C3, H7, you add COOH. The functional group of alkanoic acids or carboxylic acids is simply COOH. That is the functional group. Remember, homologous series is a family of organic compounds which follow a regular structural pattern. Each member differ by a CH2 group. Functional group is simply an atom, ion, or molecule that is common to a homologous series. So any homologous series having COOH is simply a carboxylic acid or an alkanoic acid. The functional group of the alkanoic acid is simply COOH. And this is how it bonds. This is the carbon. We have double bond to O, bond to O, and from O to H. Now, oxygen can carry maximum of two bonds. So one bond from carbon to oxygen then the other bond goes to hydrogen. Carbon can carry maximum of four bonds. This is tetravalent. Remember, the reason for the large number of organic compounds is because of the unique ability of carbon to catenate and hybridization. The compound of carbon alone is more than the compound of every other element in the periodic table combined. So, carbon here, there is one bond here. One and two. One, two, three, four. So this can go to another carbon, then hydrogen, hydrogen, or hydrogen, or simply another carbon, hydrogen, 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 or another carbon, hydrogen, 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 depending on the acid you are trying to arrive at. For example, this is one, two, three, four. That is butanoic acid. So the functional group of carboxylic acids is simply C O O H. Now look at something. C O O H. In my last video, I explained alkanons. I did a lot of work on the alkanons from properties, preparation, uses, types, classification, and so on. Under alkanons, I explained that the functional group of 
for Akanon is simply OH. This is Akanon functional group. So Akanon are formed when the OH group is attached to a general formula. So ROH or CNH2N plus 1 OH. Now this CNH2N plus 1, you can simply say ROCOOH. This also represents the Akai group. No difference. This being said, you can therefore deduce that the alkanoic acid or carboxylic acids, they have two functional groups. One, the OH functional group, hydroxy group, and the CO. Any compound, any organic compound that has the functional group C, double bond to O, is referred to as carbonyl compound. Therefore, you can refer to alkanoic acids or carboxylic acids as carbonyl compounds. We have other carbonyl compounds like alkanas. Alkanas are carbonyl compounds. They have the C double bond to O at the end of the ring or at the terminal. We have alkanones, N-O-N-E-S. Alkanones, they have the C double bond to O, which is the carbonyl group, at the middle of the chain. Therefore, examples of carbonyl compounds are carboxylic acids or alkanoic acids, alkanones, alkanones, and so on. Even esters, just like hydrocarbons, an alkanoic acid can be aliphatic or aromatic. Aliphatic simply means just having straight chains or branch chains. Why aromatic has to do with possessing the benzene structure. Now, the structure of benzene is simply a resonance hybrid and August Kekule proposed that suitable structure. That should be in 1825. Now, aliphatic hydrocarbons can be classified based on the number of carboxyl group present. Just like alkanones. In my alkanones video, I explained that alkanones can be classified based on the number of the hydroxyl group or OH and based on the position of the OH. Based on the number of the hydroxyl group, we have monohydric alkanones, one hydroxyl group, dihydric alkanones, two, polyhydric alkanones, three, no, trihydric alkanones, three hydroxyl group, polyhydric alkanones, many hydroxyl group. And based on the position of functional group, we have primary alkanones, secondary alkanones, and tertiary alkanones. Back to carboxylic acids. Based on the number of the carboxyl group or the carboxylic group, which is the COOH, the functional group, a carboxylic acid can be monocarboxylic acid, dicarboxylic acid, or tricarboxylic acid. In fact, you may have polycarboxylic acids. Monocarboxylic acid is simply any carboxylic acid that possesses just one carboxylic group or one COOH. So looking at this acid and this acid, you have only one COOH. This is ethanoic acid, one, two carbon. This is propanoic acid, one, two, three carbons. We also have the dicarboxylic acids. These are carboxylic acids possessing two carboxyl group or two carboxylic group. Look at this acid. It has COOH here and COOH here. So it is dicarboxylic acid. And this is ethan dioic acid. Another example is this one has one, two carboxyl group. So this is cis butin dioic acid. This is an isomer. I treated isomerism in detail. Just check out my chemistry playlist. You'll find more than enough videos to watch. Then tricarboxylic acid. These are carboxylic acid having three carboxyl group. Example is citric acid. This is the formula for citric acid. And the IUPAC name for citric acid is simply 2 hydroxyl propan 1, 2, 3 tricarboxylic acid. So this is a tricarboxylic acid. And we have the top two 
aromatic carboxylic acid or aromatic alkanoic acid. The first one is benzoic acid. When you have the benzene structure or the benzene ring with COOH, it is simply benzoic acid and it is aromatic in nature. As you can see, it contains the benzene ring, the benzene structure. Another example of aromatic carboxylic acid is simply 2-hydroxybenzoic acid. It contains the OH group and the COOH group. So these are examples of aromatic carboxylic acids. Now let's see general properties of alkanoic acid. General properties. The first one, the low members are colorless liquid at room temperature. Now remember, the carboxylic group or carboxylic acids, they are a homologous series. They have different members. The first member differs from the second member by a CH2, which is one carbon, two hydrogen. That is it for all homologous series. A K, methane differs from ethane by a CH2 group. Ethene differs from propene by CH2 group. Ethanoic acid should differ from propanoic acid by a CH2. Now it says the lower members are colorless liquid at room temperature, which means the first few members. The first member is methanoic acid, which means it contains one carbon. Methanoic acid, that should be C, hydrogen, O, OH or HCOOH. This is methanoic acid, the first member. It is therefore colorless liquid at room temperature. The second member of the alkanoic acid is ethanoic acid. The third member, propanoic acid. The fourth member, butanoic acid. Fifth member, pentanoic acid. <laughs> Sixth member, hexanoic acid. And so on. So the first two members are colorless at room temperature. Their boiling points are higher than that of arcanes of comparable mass. Generally, organic compounds have lower or low boiling point. But when we look at organic acids or alkanoic acids or carboxylic acids, we realize that comparing them to similar alkanes of the same mass, these guys they have higher boiling points. This is also true for alkanones. What is the reason for high boiling point in alkanones and alkanoic acids? It is simply as a result of the presence of hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bond. Take note of that. And the third property here is that alkanoic acids they dissociate in aqueous solution to produce ozonium ion and carboxylic ion. Remember, when acid dissociates, they produce hydrogen ion or hydrozonium ion. So look at this guy, ROCOOH, in aqueous form. Aqueous means it is in water or in solution. So it dissolves. It produced ROCOO bar, this ion, carboxylic ion, and H3O plus hydrozonium ion. Look at it. We know that when an acid dissolves in water, it produces hydrogen ion as the positive ion, right? But this hydrogen ion is not free. You cannot just see hydrogen ion like that. So the hydrogen ion combined to form H3+, combined with other hydrogen to form H3+. So hydrogen ion, hydrozonium ion is a goal. Now this is it. Acid dissociates in solution to form carboxylate ion and hydrozonium ion. This is the equilibrium constant for the reaction. The product, they are at the top, the reactant at the bottom. Water is here because it's in aqueous form, there is water. But if you choose to take the concentration of water to be one, then this becomes like this, the equilibrium constant. So, this is the equilibrium constant for dissociation of alkanoic acid in 
water. Acids, acidity and solubility decreases with number of carbons. Now, we have different members, right? The first member I said methanoic acid, fourth butanoic acid. This simply implies that methanoic acid will be more acidic and more soluble than butanoic acid. As the number of carbon or the number of carbon in the alkyl group increases, the acidity and solubility of alkanoic acids will begin to drop. And another property of the carboxylic acid is reduction. This is a chemical property. Alkanoic acids are not easily reduced. It is very hard to reduce. But under the influence of strong reducing agents like lithium tetrahydroaluminate 3, then they can be reduced to form ethanol and water. So this powerful reducing agent can reduce, say, ethanoic acid to ethanol and water. Oxidation. Alkanoic acids are not easily oxidized. In fact, they are not readily oxidized. Why? They are a product of oxidation. When alkanons are oxidized, primary alkanons, when they are oxidized completely, they form alkanoic acids. When they are oxidized partially, they form alkanons. So, since acids are a product of oxidation themselves, they are not easily oxidized. But we have exception to this rule. The exceptions are methanoic acid and ethane dioic acid or ethane dioic acid. Methanoic acid are oxidized in the presence of powerful oxidizing agents KMNO4, potassium tetraozomanganate 7 to form carbon 4 oxide and hydrogen gas. Ethane dioic acid are oxidized as well to form carbon 4 oxide and hydrogen gas. So although these guys are not readily oxidized, oxidizing methanoic acid or ethane dioic acid will form carbon 4 oxide and hydrogen. Dehydration. Alkanoic acids, they are not readily dehydrated. It's very, very hard. In fact, only two are dehydrated readily, which is still the same methanoic acid and ethane dioic acid. They are the ones that will even want to dehydrate. So when you dehydrate them in the presence of conch H2SO4, concentrated H2SO4 is a very is a dehydrating agent. All conch H2SO4 is dehydrated. Dehydration is the removal of elements of water and it alters the structure of the compound. So look at this. Dehydrating methanoic acid will simply form carbon monoxide. Structure change completely. And dehydrating this uh, ethane dioic acid will form carbon monoxide and carbon four oxide in the presence of concentrated H2SO4. So this is the general property of ethanoic acid. Now, looking at ethanoic acid, we can't treat all the members. So we are required to take, looking at alkanoic acids, we can't treat all the members. Therefore, we are required to take ethanoic acid as a representative, as a member. So let's take ethanoic acid as a member to look at the preparation, laboratory preparation and industrial preparation of alkanoic acids, their physical property, their uses, and other things we need. It is used in preserving and flavoring food. It is used to coagulate rubber lattice. It is used to prepare dyes, cellulose ethanoids, and propanones. It is used to prepare esters. It is used, it is an important organic solvent. And it also finds application in making plastics bottles. So these are the common uses of ethanoic acids. Application in making plastic bottles, important organic solvents, preparing dyes, cellulose ethanoid, propanones, used to prepare esters, which is alkyl alkanoids. They are used to coagulate rubber, preserving and flavoring of foods. These are top uses of ethanoic acids. How do we prepare ethanoic acids? In my alkanones class, I explained that when alkanones react with alkanoic acids, they form esters and water. That is esterification. 
I gave the formula and I explained it in detail. I will advise you go through that video. I also explained that primary and secondary arcanons can be oxidized, but secondary tertiary arcanons cannot be oxidized. I also said that when you oxidize primary arcanons completely, you get arcanoic acids. So in this case, when you oxidize ethanol, you get ethanoic acid and water. So this is the general formula for oxidation of primary arcanons. This is the alkyl group, right? And this is the OH group, showing arcanon, the hydrogen functional group. So in the presence of dichromate so, uh, as catalyst or tetraozomanganate 7, or you say you can use K plus MnO4 as catalyst, you'll be able to oxidize. So partial oxida oxidation will give you arcana. And when you oxidize further, using the same catalyst, you get arcanoic acid. So you can use the uh, chromate solution to oxidize. Hepta also dichromate, or you use um, manganese solution. Both of them are good oxidizing agents. But this is what happens. When you use this catalyst, the solution changes from orange to green. But when you use permanganate or tetraozomanganate, the solution changes from purple to colorless. What am I trying to explain? When you oxidize primary arcanos completely, you get arcanoic acid. That is a major way to prepare arcanoic acids. We can use these other methods. Just for knowledge, oxidation of arkins can give you ethanoic acid or arcanoic acids. Oxidation of alkyl benzenes will give you arcanoic acids or carboxylic acids. Hydrolysis of carbon nitrides will give you acid. Distilling a hydrosodium ethanoate with conk H2SO4 will give you a carboxylic acid acids and these are properties of carboxylic acid they have high boiling point due to the presence of hydrogen bonding but ethanoic acid itself has one a boiling point of 118 degrees ethanoic acid turns blue litmus red which is a typical property of acid acid will turn blue litmus paper to red deliberate carbon dioxide from trisocarbonate 4 solution yeah that is a property of acid Deliberate carbon dioxide from carbon uh, triazocarbonate. Sour taste when diluted. Yes, acids they possess sour taste, and they are colorless, characteristic sharp, and pungent smell. These are physical properties of ethanoic acids or of arcanoic acids. Let's look at the chemical properties. Ethanoic acid will slightly ionize in dilute solution, and I gave you. The ionization reaction where we form hydrozonium ion and I explain hydrozonium ion and hydrogen ion. They slightly ionize in solution because they are weak acid. We have strong acids and weak acids. Strong acid we ionize completely in solution, readily in solution. Why weak acids we ionize slightly in solution? Neutralization, yes, when acids react with base. They form salt and water. So, when ethanoic acids react with sodium hydroxide, they form sodium ethanoate and water. So, this is an ester salt. Esterification, yes. This is a chemical property of acids. Arcanoic acids or carboxylic acids, they have derivatives. We derive esters and amides from arcanoic acids. So, these are acids derivatives, esters and amides. When arcanoids, react with arcanoic acids, we form esters and water. They are alkyl arcanoids. I explained that in arcanoids and earlier in this video, I mentioned that. Reduction. Acids can be reduced in the presence of strong reducing agents, lithium tetrahydroaluminate uh, 3, to form arcanol and water. And decarboxylation is the removal of carbon dioxide. So ethanoic acid can be decarboxylated to form CH4, methane, and CO2. Ladies and gentlemen, arcanoic acids, carboxylic acids. That is it for today. I hope you found this class helpful. If yes, tell your friends about Platinum Acid channel, share with others, 
And don't fail to drop your comment. A sub to this channel will be appreciated. Subscribe to get my updates.